throughout the late 90s and into the 2010s, football fans have been treated to some unbelievable strikers like Raul, Andrei Shevchenko, Ronaldo Nazario, Ruud van Nistelrooy, Cristiano Ronaldo, Didier Drogba, Messi, Zlatan, and that's just scratching the surface. Buried beneath all that greatness to become something of a forgotten man is the lethal Italian marksman Luca Toni, who I think, due to the fact that he never gets mentioned amongst the names above in the who is a great striker conversation, makes him criminally underrated. It took a while for the late bloomer Tony to make an impact in Italy, spending the first 9 years of his career bouncing around the lower Italian divisions, turning out for no less than 6 clubs in that time. This included spells in the Serie C with Fiorenzolo and Lodigiani, and the Serie B with Empoli and Trevioso before being relegated from Serie A with Vicenza, before playing alongside legends of the game Roberto Baggio and Pep Guardiola at Brescia. Tony's career was finally about to take off in 2003 when at the age of 26 he agreed to leave Brescia and drop back down the division to Serie B and play for an ambitious Palermo side who were desperate to secure promotion after their hopes were dashed on the final day of the previous season by Lecce. Tony was one of a raft of savvy summer signings such as Simon Pepe, Gaetano Vasari and Andrea Gasbaroni who had all been brought in to help take Palermo back to the Serie A for the first time since 1973. Tony was absolutely key to Palermo winning the Serie B that year as he went utter beast mode and enjoyed his most season yet, scoring 30 times in the division, ending the campaign as the league's top scorer. The Serie B title was also Tony's first taste of silverware. The following season, the big Italian hitman proved that he was not just a one season wonder, scoring 20 goals in the Serie A with Palermo, helping the club to a 6th place finish in the league and qualification to the UEFA Cup first round for the first time in their history. Standing at 6 foot 4, Tony was a traditional number 9, a target man through and through. It could be argued that he was the last of the great target men, as the game has evolved since Lucas Day, where a high press is now employed in most teams and we are used to agile and pacey forwards intensely pressurising defenders and goalkeepers or going on mazy, tricky and dazzling runs with the ball from deep. Luca didn't really have the technique or the speed for any of that. His teammates would just lump the ball towards Luca, and he would deal with it, using his physical presence to bully defenders in the box and fire home with his head or blast it across the line with his boot or any other part of his body that was needed. It wasn't always attractive and it wasn't always orthodox, but by god it was effective. Luca Toni's exploits had led him to being considered as a hero to the Palermo fans, but that loving soon turned to loathing as he was signed by Fiorentina for 7 million in the summer of 2005, with accusations that he had betrayed the club which had given him the springboard for his success and he was leaving for the money and he was a traitor. The Palermo fans even booed him during a World Cup qualifying match against Slovenia in October 2005, which Tony said this about. After two great years with 50 goals to come back and be treated like that, would you be happy? There were strong emotions involved for me. I was back at the stadium where I played for two years, but this happens in football. Of course it is sad. Tony evidently didn't let any of this affect him, as he enjoyed a mind blowing debut season for Fiorentina, which was surely beyond the wildest dreams of those that had brought him to the club. His 31 goals that season saw him furnished with a European golden boot, the first time an Italian had won the award. He also fired himself to the history books as his goal tally was, remarkably, the first time in 51 years that any player in the Serie A had plundered more than 30. Despite this, there were still some who objected to the apparently uncoordinated, lumbering and cumbersome Tony being called up to the Italy squad for the 2006 World Cup that summer. The towering target man would enjoy a typically battling and powerful tournament, bagging his only two goals of the tournament in the quarterfinals against Ukraine, hitting the crossbar twice, once in the opening match against Ghana and another time in the final against France which Italy would ultimately win on penalties in unforgettable fashion. Tony also had a goal disallowed for offside in the final. He was fouled more than any other player in the tournament, being illegally impeded 28 times as well as getting off 20 shots, form which saw him named in the team of the tournament. Italian football was in the headlines for all the wrong reasons as well that summer, as although Fiorentina managed a 4th place finish in the league, that placement was revoked by judges who found them complicit in the Calciopoli match fixing scandal and guilty of influencing referees decisions. They were forced to start the 06-07 season minus 19 points. Because of this, Tony was keen to leave, but Fiorentina president De La Valle convinced him to stick around. Although injuries kept Tony from reproducing his stunning maiden season of form with the club, he still managed a respectable tally of 16, the same as new Romanian striking partner Adrian Mutu, as the two hitmen helped their team overcome the points deduction and finish 6th. Tony hadn't managed more than two seasons at one club up to that point in his career, and that wasn't going to change with Fiorentina, as German giants Bayern came in for the equally giant striker, sealing his transfer for the relatively the meagre sum of 10 million. Peanuts for a world champion who has scored 97 goals in the last 4 seasons in the Italian leagues. 
Although not following a well-trodden path of Italian strikers by heading north to Germany, Tony took to the Bundesliga like Parmesan takes to warm pasta, like sauerkraut takes to sausage. In his debut season with Bayern, he bagged a brilliant 24 goals in the league, making him the top scorer. Overall, he finished with a quite unreal total of 39 goals and 12 assists in all competitions as he helped the Bayern through a domestic treble of sorts, winning the league and the German Cup, although I'm not sure if we're really counting the Liga Pokal. This triumphant season included some magnificent and dramatic moments from Luka, namely his perfect hat-trick against Hanover, which was, again remarkably, the first Bundesliga hat-trick scored by a Bayern player since Hans Dorfer in 1989. Tony was also instrumental in the German Cup win, as he scored the opening goal of the final against Dortmund, and then the winner in the 103rd minute to see Bayern lift the cup. He was also heavily influential in Bayern's run to the semi-finals of the UEFA Cup. He scored four goals against Greek side Aris and continued his pinch on for the dramatic and his ability to rescue victory from the jaws of defeat by scoring two goals in five extra time minutes to secure a win on away goals against Hetafe in the quarterfinals. Ultimately, Bayern would be dispatched in the semis with relative ease, losing 5-1 on aggregate to eventual winner Zenit. Tony was joint top scorer along with Pavel Pogrebniak with both players striking 10 times in the competition. The 08-09 season would be an injury disrupted one for Tony as he was bothered by an Kelly's tendon issue. He still managed to finish the season as Bayer's top scorer in the league with 14, with an especially consistent run of form coming in the new year as he scored in six consecutive matches. The following season, Tony showed why he had never spent more than two senior campaigns at a club as he went to war with Dutch manager Louis van Gaal, becoming frustrated over his lack of game time as he endeavoured to be selected for the 2010 World Cup. Tony's first final offence came on 9th of November after he left the stadium at half time following his substitution. Two weeks later, Tony was suspended by Van Hal following what was described as a complete breakdown in their relationship. One day later, Tony was again in hot water to the tune of a €25,000 fine after publicly voicing his frustration and criticising his Dutch boss. Bayern president Uli Hoeneß, presumably at his wit's end, then said Tony could leave for free, before eventually agreeing to loan him to Roma for the remainder of the season, where Tony scored five times to help the Roman Giants to second in the league. Following the termination of his contract with Bayern in 2010, the 33 year old Tony's career started to eerily echo the beginning of his nomadic footballing journey, as he was shunted from pillar to post in Italy and the United Arab Emirates, spending time at Genoa, Juventus and Al Nassar before ending up back at Fiorentina. His goal scoring form also returned to being as unspectacular and sporadic as it was during his earlier years, managing just 21 league goals in 5 seasons. Just when it seemed like he was finished, Tony was offered the chance of one last dance with Italian Minnows Hellas Verona, where he enjoyed a remarkable renaissance in the twilight years of his footballing career. Tony had once again found his shooting boots, as the 37 year old ended the 2013 14 season second in the scoring charts with 20 Serie A goals. Next campaign, he would again make history, as his 22 league goals saw him become the oldest ever top scorer in Serie A at the age of 38, sharing the top spot with Mauro Icardi. Age would eventually catch up with Tony Goal, as his his final season of professional football was marred by injuries. He scored a Panenka penalty against Juve in a 2-1 win, deciding to retire at Verona's home stadium and draw the curtain on a remarkable, nomadic and unconventional career, which saw him plunder, poach and prod home 157 Serie A goals in 344 appearances, and a total of 324 in 705 appearances in all competitions for club and country. So, Luca Toni was the last great example of a dying breed of striker, remaining unapologetically true to his style. As football was evolving around him, there was Luca Toni, hanging around in an 18-yard box, waiting for his opportunity to strike and add to his impossibly huge tally of goals, and building up an army of loyal and dedicated fans at every club he went to. I say he deserves to be mentioned in the same breath as the other great strikers of his era. I say all hail Luca Toni, the last of the great target men.